Good morning and welcome. Welcome in the name of our living Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the ministry team at St Michael and All Angels in Millwich, we thank you for joining us for worship on this special day set aside to celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We sing together, crown him with many crowns. Palm Sunday, Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now over to Alison for today's readings. Our first reading is Psalm 118, verses 19 to 24. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet, from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we will go to Simon for our reflection. Hello. I'm Simon Drew, and these are just a few thoughts on the story of Palm Sunday. The story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem in AD 30 stands in distinct contrast uh, to the experience that we are having today. Under the government guidance on social isolation and distancing, our streets are largely deserted. The maximum permitted group is two people, and we are encouraged to stay at home. That is the government message. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, there were people everywhere. Crowds thronged the streets, because it was the annual Jewish festival of Passover, and thousands of people went to Jerusalem and up to the temple for the festival. And there was also a sense of excitement and expectancy. Israel was longing to be liberated from its oppression under Roman rule, and they were looking for someone who they would call the Messiah, who would set them free. And Jesus was a man with a reputation. People knew about his miracles and his teaching. And so these two emotions come together at Passover, on the streets of Jerusalem sometime in AD 30. Now the crowd were influenced by their immediate experience. Passover was a festival, a time to party and rejoice. And so, as I said, they were quite expectant. Uh, and Jesus' reputation fueled this. News about him had spread throughout the country. And most recently, he'd been in Bethany, raising Lazarus from the dead. So when Jesus arrives, there are great celebrations. Cloaks and branches are laid on the road. There was a sign of homage to Jesus. The people, as it were, are improvising. Now, if a victorious king or general was coming along, entering a city, the road would have been prepared, cleared of obstacles and stalls and such like. There would be flags and banners, trumpets and drums, and soldiers in glittering uniforms, and they would all accompany him down the road. So the people grab what is to hand, cloaks from their backs, and branches pulled from trees, and they lay them on the road to make way for Jesus to come through. And they cry out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Words which are taken from Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26. 
which is one of the festival psalms they would have been singing at that time anyway. But this is a clear indication that in the euphoria of the moment, the crowd are indeed treating Jesus as the Messiah, the one they hope will set them free. Now, Jesus also attributes significance to this moment. As far as we know, Jesus walked everywhere. He even walked on water. That's Mark 6, by the way. Choosing to ride was a deliberate choice to enact the messianic parable which we find in Zechariah 9, verse 9. And that's the one quoted in Matthew 21, verse 5. See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It is a prophecy which emphasises the humility of the Messiah, contrasting with the horses and chariots of a king or a general. And so he rides into Jerusalem and the crowd go wild. And sadly, the significance of the donkey is lost. They're excited by a king. They're excited by the promise of freedom and salvation. And they have forgotten the words of Jesus. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Words from Mark chapter 10, verse 45. So this year, as we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus at Easter, we won't have the usual church services and the walk of witness and other usual stuff to focus on. So how will you improvise this Easter? What routines and objects in your homes and your daily experience will you use to celebrate the story of Jesus' death and resurrection this year? For many of us in a normal year, the events of Monday, Thursday and Good Friday get lost in the general hubbub of life. We move quite quickly from Palm Sunday to Easter Day. And the Last Supper, that's Monday, Thursday, and the crucifixion on Good Friday are often bypassed. Not necessarily intentionally, but just because that's the way life is. This year, I suspect you will have a little more time to stop and to mark these occasions, which are an essential part of the journey to the resurrection joy of Easter Day. So I want to challenge you to do stuff in your homes to mark Holy Week. Improvise like the people did with the palm branches. Use what is to hand. You could make your own wooden cross from whatever you've got in the shed or the garage. Have some bread and wine with your evening meal on Thursday and pause and remember the Last Supper. Build an Easter garden with your children or even without them. And plan to have an Easter meal together on Easter Sunday to mark the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We will be giving you other resources and ideas in the coming days. But take this opportunity, the gift of time, to remember that Jesus came, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. God bless you. So we're now going to move uh, to a time of prayer for this Palm Sunday. If you receive our regular email update, you should have been prompted to be prepared for this and to have uh, a paper cross, um, exhibit A, uh, and also an item of clothing to hand so you are ready to participate uh, in our prayers. If you're not quite ready, I shall just pause and let you go and find your bits and pieces.
OK. So first, I'd like to invite you to hold your paper cross in your hand uh, while I say the following prayer. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these crosses be for us a sign of his victory. And grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to take your items of clothing uh, and just somewhere convenient in the room uh, to lay them on the floor. If you're a family, you might like to lay them next to each other uh, to make a kind of strip of clothing. Let's just lay them on the floor. There we are. And let's just hear the words of this prayer as we invite Jesus into our homes this Easter. Father, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people laid their cloaks on the road for him to ride over. We lay our clothes on the road and invite you to enter our homes this Easter. May we walk with Jesus the road to suffering and new life. Help us to follow his example. And remember, as we celebrate the feast in our homes, that glory comes through sacrifice, life through death, and kingship through service. Amen. And so we're going to continue uh, in a time of prayer. First of all, we pray for our nation at this time, for our leaders as they seek to guide us through this crisis. We pray for their wisdom and for their own health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those on the front line of engagement with coronavirus, for health workers, for the emergency services, for teachers still looking after children in schools, and for those who work in our shops and supermarkets. Protect them and guide them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are affected directly by the coronavirus. And we take this moment of silence now to offer to God the names of those we know, friends, family, maybe neighbours, who are affected today, and we bring them to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we're going to draw our own prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so I'd like to finish with the prayer of blessing for this Palm Sunday. 
Christ crucified draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each one of you, among you and in your homes, now and always. Amen. And so now I'd like to hand back to Jeremy for our final song. We sing together, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor. to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.